Well, I heard about um, bin Laden's assassination as I was getting ready for bed, <laughs> actually. And needless to say, I stayed up very late, you know, listening for developments as they broke. And um, was really quite astounded, one of those historical moments that um, one doesn't soon forget. I think with the revolutions that have been taking place in the Arab world recently, Al-Qaeda was sort of out of sight, out of mind. I think Al-Qaeda was caught flat-footed by the Arab Spring, by the downfall of the regimes in Tunis, by the uprisings in Yemen and Syria and elsewhere. And I think Al-Qaeda was scrambling, um, trying to figure out how it should respond. And now we have the assassination of its symbolic leader, Osama bin Laden, who probably had very little to do with tactical operations, but who nonetheless remained the symbol you know, of, of, of the Al-Qaeda movement. And now he's assassinated. And I think the remnants of Al-Qaeda Central uh, perhaps some of the affiliates, regional affiliates as well, will have to scramble, um, will have to try and prove that they are still relevant. And unfortunately, that might take the form of a terrorist attack. You, you travel throughout the Muslim world and you learn very quickly that people hate bin Laden and al-Qaeda because, as you say, most of his victims were in fact Muslim. Um, that's not to say that bin Laden didn't have admirers, uh, people who respected him for having stood up to the you know, hegemonic power of the West and so forth, but certainly the overwhelming majority of Muslims in the world recognized bin Laden for what he was, a, a terrorist whose practices and teachings went against the precepts of Islam. Well, it is, and there's going to be heightened security alerts, and I think for good reason, because I think we might expect some type of response, violent response, um, whether these attacks will be perpetrated by the remnants of Al-Qaeda Central, um, whether by Al-Qaeda free floaters, in other words, people who subscribe to the ideology of the global jihad but who act individually, who aren't part of a large network. I don't think we're going to see action taken by any of the Al-Qaeda affiliates in North Africa or the Arabian Peninsula. They act locally, uh, think globally, but I think their focus is on the struggle in their particular regions. But I think we can expect some type of vociferous response. Um, again, just to prove the relevancy of the organization, which has been on the skids, on the downward curve for some time, at least since 2000, 2005, 2004, 2005. I think we just have to sort of, you know, continue to monitor responses from the Muslim world. I noticed that the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt has condemned the assassination. The Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt believes that um, bin Laden shouldn't have been assassinated, that he should have been captured. Um, I think we're going to have all kinds of mixed responses coming out of the Muslim world as to how this operation was handled. Of course, there are many questions. Um, one, of course, relates to the complicity or lack thereof of the Pakistani military and government. What role did they have in facilitating this assassination operation? Um, who, you know, who, who built the compound in which uh, bin Laden lived? Uh, how did bin Laden come to be in, in the, you know, in, in, in near Islamabad? All of these are questions.